Bienvenue à « Comment gagner de l'argent » et « Comment créer une entreprise et augmenter vos revenus » avec Glendon Cameron. What is education? What you really think about? What is, what is education? For roughly four years and some odd months, I've been the uh, canary in the in the in the, in the uh, mine. Some things that I predicted have come to pass, but even with accurate predictions, people are still going. No, 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 that is what you need, that is what you need, no, 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 and I really started to think about it, I said, okay, now I know I am from the planet Spankable, I understand that, I understand I'm an alien, withstanding that, why are only people on really upper echelons are talking about this, like the guy who found their paper. There are many, many people who are saying the same thing that I'm saying, that the traditional education system is broken. There's a problem when you pay any amount of money for any amount of training and you actually end up being harmed financially by taking out the money to pay for that training. That is a problem. I'm not talking about someone who goes to school and then is in an accident and can't work. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what is becoming very, very normal for people to go to college and be financially harmed for years. For years. Decades. Then it, it hit me. We're having this conversation. And I remember, you know, I'm just going back to some of the responses that would come up on my Facebook page when I put the degree myth up in like 2010, 2011, I don't remember, to the ones that are now. And the, the thing is, and education is important. And I agree. But when I say education, I'm talking about all forms of learning. When you say education, you're talking about a college degree. That's the disconnect and that's the problem. I feel... And you, you can challenge me on this, please do, that my education gained from YouTube, learning, writing, failing since 2009 with this publishing business is worth more than any degree because it allows me to make money from nothing. How many degrees are out there that you can get for free uh, my only uh, cost in this was sweat equity and application that earns me enough money to support myself. Name one degree that does that, that you can get for free. Name one. Closest thing that comes to that is the Hope Scholarship if you can get it and maintain your GPA or whatever forms of scholarships some states may have. But even with that, you still have books housing, transportation. There's still associated costs with that. So even with the tuition paid, it's still a lot of money. Now, I know that was a very bold statement. Very, very bold because this education that I'm getting, at some point, it's going to push this whole enterprise to seven and eight figures. And it was a journey of sweat equity. Now, let's really talk about education. There is somehow, some way, this movement that happened that poo-poos vocational education, which is plumbing, electrical, technical stuff. There is this thing. I haven't read the bill, but the No Child Left Behind Act is incredibly harmful because it makes the assumption that if you are a kid in school and if you're not on the degree track, that somehow you're a failure. That's the implication. That is uh, the grand takeaway from that. It has created hysteria. It has created poor decision-making process. And it is the reason that there are so many kids who are in tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars of student loan debt, and they're working at Starbucks. I mean, when you really apply critical knowledge, critical application 
to the process, you, you, will, you will come away from this going, there's something wrong. Yet, here's the issue. It is socially acceptable to go to school and not really produce in life than to go out, create a business, become very successful, but not get any props. It is more of a cultural norm of acceptance that to say, oh, what are you doing with your life? Well, I'm in grad school. Oh, I'm finishing up. And people will pat you on your head and say, good boy, good girl. That craving for a social acceptance of, hey, I'm doing the right thing, is so powerful that even when it doesn't work, even when you have that degree and you're like, well, you know, I'm doing this job and I'm not making any money. Uh, yeah, I need to go get another degree that's not going to provide me money. Now, the reason I'm doing this is I feel that we're in one of the greatest technological fluxes in the, in the history so far. And what's going to happen is you're going to go to college and you're going to do all the right stuff. You're going to be smarter than that average bear. You will do your due diligence, you will plot out your career path, and you will graduate college and have that job for a year or two, and then technology will fuck you up. It will fuck you up. You will be like, what the? And you did all the right things. This is what happened to people during this recession who, who saved money. They put their money in the right place, they did the right thing, and they still got fucked. That's what's going to happen to many people if you continue to believe in this myth. Now, there is hope and there is promise on the other side. First of all, you must orientate your brain to the thought that you will always be in some form of school. You will always be in the mode of education. If you're going to be successful going forward, you cannot get, quote, an education and rest on the laurels of that education, whether it's formal, informal. No, you, your ass will always be in school. Wrap your mind around that right now. Because the stuff that I learned in 2009, 2010, good 60% of it doesn't work anymore. 40%, maybe some days 50%, but many of the things that I did, they don't work anymore. So what did that mean? I had to go back to the lab and learn new shit. Or I would suffer the fate of many people that refuse to learn new shit, which is becoming obsolete. <laughs> Your life cycle is complete, baby. It's a wrap. And that's what's happening. And many people for just want to, hey, and it's part of that uh, retirement culture that I'm going to work so hard and I'm going to get to a point where I'm not going to really do anything and I'll make a lot of money. That is also in jeopardy. You will have to go to Asian philosophy. You know why the Kung Fu master was the uh, sensei or the uh, dojo head? Because he could kick everyone's ass because of ability and talent. That's gonna have to, you're gonna have to be the dojo master. You will not be able to like I'm the master because you know uh, one of the forms of assumed leadership, you know positional leadership. You're the leader because of position, not because of actual power or respect. It's just hey, you have this job. People have to respect you, or they will lose their job. No, it's gonna be you're the leader because you are the leader. You're gonna have, that's what we're moving toward. And it's really, really interesting that people don't see this. Now, let's break down education. Education is when you do something new that you didn't do before and you learn lessons. So if you made a snazzy way to make a new cake, that's education. If you are a skateboarder and you develop a new trick, that's education. If you're on the beach and you figure out a way that to build sand castles faster, that is education. If you are in college and someone's telling you about Hamlet and you discuss the how that parallels with real life, that's education. It is all education. And there are many people who go like, well, you know, I know how you feel about going to college. Let me be fundamentally clear. I feel you are an idiot if you go to school and spend $6,200,000 and you come out of school and you cannot support yourself. I spent nothing but my time and create a business that allows me to support myself in 14 months. I'm not the smartest bear on the planet. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. What I am is someone who is able to observe, conceptualize, 
and comprehend the information that is given to me. That is the big, big problem. You have many people who are what I call depository smart. Depository smart is you have a bunch of facts in your head, you've read a lot of books, in conversation, you sound good. But when it comes to actually figuring some shit out, you are dumb as a rock. Because you have depository smarts. You have stuff deposited into in it and you regurgitate it and people go, oh Lord, he is so smart. She is so smart. Listen to that little parrot. Polly want a cracker? I mean, that's what's going on because true intellect governed by the ability to solve problems leaves evidence. If there is no evidence of your smarts, you're not that smart. And uh, I think that is something that tends to throw people and creates a level of hysteria because we're also in another bubble. The faux uh, self-esteem generation where you're good and because you were on the team and no, you didn't practice that hard and no, you didn't hit the winning home run, but you're going to get a trophy and you're going to be celebrated and embraced just like the people that did. Now, kids with integrity, and I've seen this, when they're handing out these little fake-ass trophies, the kids who know they didn't do shit, they don't feel good about taking them. The ones who have some integrity, they're like, I, I didn't earn that. And then they know this, and they know there's something wrong. And it's like, no, little Johnny, you're good. But uh, I missed half the season. I don't deserve a trophy. Kids are very, very freaking honest. They're extremely honest. And a lot of times, parents kind of push that shit out of them. But this full self-esteem generation is going to run into, well, it's running into many problems. Because once again, without the application of critical thought, and the ability to solve problems, to take care of themselves, they're like they're 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 kind of lost and they're unattached and they're just kind of floating out there because it's like, well, I was told this and I was told that, but in the real world, the real world's going, <laughs> bitch, you were swindled, you were bamboozled. That is not real life, and we we have people in that state and at that point and they're going through this stuff. And it's creating a lot of problems because I live in the internet world and I see every day people who two, three, four years ago, such as myself, who didn't have a business, who are now making great money to fantastic money on some skills they did not have a few years ago. It is, that is what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to realize that you are fundamentally stupid. I realize I'm fundamentally stupid on many things. There are many things I don't know how they operate yet. It's like, okay, this is challenging. This is difficult. This is going to take some rigorous application of mental effort for me to figure this out. Oh, or I can't figure that out. I'm going to have to hire someone to help me. I'm going to have to pay for some information. That's where I'm at. And I will do it in a heartbeat. If I can't figure it out, I'm going to find someone to help me figure it out. Because... When you become so caught up in yourself that you can solve the problems of the world by yourself, you're only going to go so far. You're only going to go so far, and it's, it's going to be really, really interesting for you as you go forward in life. Because if you're not in that mode of learning and unlearning, learning and unlearning, learning and unlearning, you are going to get so far behind that it's going to be daunting for you to catch up. I mean, if you really have the hustler's mindset and you're really looking at this from the right position, you know that you can jump into the streams of change and uh, be okay because at some point you're going to start to absorb the information and you're going to be able to move forward with it. But if you are fundamentally stupid and fundamentally arrogant that you don't need any help, you're smart enough to figure it out, I have this for you. If your life sucked five years ago and it still sucks today, that is primary evidence that you cannot figure it out. Just saying. 
if your life sucked five years ago and it still sucks today, or if your business is in the same spot it was five years ago, you have reached your intellectual threshold of where you're going to take your business. Because if you have not improved it, if you've not pushed forward, and you're, you're not, you're not. And this is something else that I really thought was pivotal to my success with this. And I learned it in the storage auction business. I went outside of the storage auction world to get information to make the storage auction business better. I looked at all types of business models. I didn't go, the thing is, resale has a treasure hunt aspect to it. It has this ooh-wee quality. I mean, you can have a regular business and scale it up, but how often are you gonna go to an auction and get something for a dollar or maybe a hundred bucks and it's worth thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. That just doesn't happen in everyday businesses. So the reseller world has that ooh wee quality that keeps people locked. Or as uh, what Daryl said on Storage World, the wow factor, it, I, I was guilty. I was caught up. I was just like, oh, storage auctions. I mean, it was really bad. It was a habit. It was a bad, bad habit because every time that I bid on the unit, and that door, that door went up and I saw that stuff. It was an opportunity to hit a grand slam home run. Every time. That's one of the draws to that business that keeps people in there. But it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Because I was fortunate to be in the storage auction business when it was still an esoteric world. Very few people knew about it. Everybody knows about it which means that people aren't losing those jackpot units like they used to. I have friends still in the business. We talk about it. We used to get guns every month, every month, like clockwork. You know how many guns you were going to get, but you got guns. Now I'm hearing it's been eight months since I've gotten a gun. Eight months. The landscape has changed. The topography has changed. But what people don't really understand is this change impacts everything health care there are nurses who are going to be laid off there are nurses who can't find jobs teaching police all all of this and that many people are stuck on old economy methods of being successful when they don't really apply and they're being eradicated every day you know there's a few sectors where you can still work that old school magic but most you can't and every day more of them being being exploded exploded and exposed if you want to get yourself an education, I'm going to give you a few solutions. Pick 50 business books. 50 business books. I don't care if they're good or bad. 50. Go on Amazon. Uh, it's going to cost you, because you can probably get a bunch of them for a penny. Of Just highly regarded business books. Uh, I, I can't put together a list at the moment. I can give you the few. Earl Nightingale, Lead to Fill, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Uh, good to great, a lot, and I'll give you authors. Everything by Daniel Pink, everything by Daniel Pink, everything by Dan Airely. Now, you get yourself these 50 books, and you get a book, and you create a reading program. You're going to get this book on Monday. You're going to read 15 minutes, 30 minutes every day, seven days a week. Then, after that first week, you are going to actually apply the knowledge that you got out of those books to your life and your business. Now, when you get up to book 25, you're going to be real different. Your business is going to be real different. You're going to look at the world real different. And you will have created yourself an educational program that will put money in your pocket and raise your self-esteem and confidence. And it may cost you 150, 200 bucks and a great deal of your time. If you do that, you'll be suc more successful than 99.% of your friends. Old books, new books, just because what they do, because this is what happens when you read a book. You're exposed to a new ideal. You're exposed to a new thought process. And that leads you to other books. And that leads you to other And all of a sudden, you start to develop your own philosophy. You, you're like, well, no, I agree with this, but I don't agree with this. And then you start to think. Then you start to put together stuff. Then you start to become a different person. And you're in conversations, you're talking about concepts and ideals versus people and stuff. You become educated. 
in the truest sense of the world. And that is what's going to liberate you from this thing that is keeping people broke, poor, and unhappy. So in your mind, next time someone say education, you say this, education is learning about anything. Because if you say education, you use the table, and you mention, I'm going to get myself an education, most people around that table are going to assume that you're going to college. If you don't believe me, test this theory out. Go out and say, yeah, you know, I'm getting an education. And just, you may, they may say, so what school are you going to? Because it, what used to be so natural and normal has become atypical. I grew up Boy Scouts of America, Popular Mechanics, Motor Trends. These magazines every month had something that you could do and make. It, I grew up in a world where people made stuff and had hobbies and you know built kites from scratch. All of this was education. And this is one of the reasons that your parents, your parents, who made far less money than you do, were able to buy... Well, there's another reason. The tax rate was really low. That was helpful. The dollar was stronger. That was helpful. So it, it wasn't totally just their merits. But even with that, because they had to figure shit out, and there was, you get married, you move out. There was social protocols that propelled people to grow up. Now we have perpetual adolescence on both sides. You have people who are 30-some years old who are still childish because they never had to grow up. They never had to grow up. They never went through those social protocols of this is what makes a man and this is what makes a woman. Now it's like if you feel that you know, sitting in the middle of the highway being naked makes you a woman, okay, that's it. So what if you're going to become roadkill? We have a lot of crazy ideals that in the practical application are stupid, but because we're not supposed to judge, which is a lie, we all judge. Everyone judge. When you see someone and says, wow, that is a pretty dress. That's a judgment. <laughs> we want to say, don't judge when it's something that. It's like, wow, man, look, you're tall. That's a judgment. That's like doing an aspect ratio. It's like this person's tall because this person's short. That's a judgment. So all this shit, of, don't judge. We all judge every day and we have to, or we wouldn't make it in the world. Oh God, I'm too close to this car. That's a judgment. We judge. We make those type of decisions every day. But when it comes to saying that shit is stupid, there you go. You're judging. You're judging. And no one can judge except Jesus Christ and God my sick. No one. Oh, wow. That girl hair is really looking good. That's a judgment. <laughs> and one of the reasons that we're in this position is people don't think because people have been groomed not to think. Uh, one of the pitfalls to technology is it creates a dependency. And I'm guilty of this myself because... There's only a handful of phone numbers that I actually remember because I don't have to. It used to be you had to remember phone numbers. You had to write shit down. There was only one phone in the house. And we've got to the situation where there's so many things that make our lives so easy that I think that we have flipped off several switches in our brain. Because I, you know, I do a lot of stuff that's considered to be weird to keep my brain going reading, writing, mental games, tricks, because seriously, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. And it's even more pivotal than that, because if you don't keep that thing going, evolution's going to say, well, they're not using this, so we're going to get rid of it. So you're going to lose it on a grand sense that your kids won't get it because you've lost it. Yes, I believe in evolution. I mean, there's plenty of empirical evidence to the fact of evolution. And I know the creationists will be like, oh, God, he's one of them. Yep, I am. But really think, you can educate yourself by reading and applying. And it's not enough just to read. You become the top, depository smart. You have this all of this knowledge. And I've met many people like this. When I was homeless, when I was in the boarding house, there was a few guys in there who were damn near depository smart geniuses knew so much and they had it's like and i remember one of the guys was like yo og you got all this knowledge and it's just like oh knowledge knowledge without application is insanity so what if you got the knowledge what are you gonna do with it what are you gonna do with it just having that knowledge is like oh i got this knowledge 
The knowledge is not distilled and utilized and pushed out into the world. It's a waste. It's a waste. So train yourself. Next time you say, I'm going to educate myself, do not go, I'm going to educate myself and draw a line straight to someone's college. This is going to come up. And as the future moves forward, this uh, thing with education and the higher and traditional education is going to be even proven to be a bigger bad decision for most people because this is the thing. Everyone doesn't need a degree. Everyone doesn't need a degree. There are people in the world right now who are billionaires who don't have a degree there are people who are multi-millionaires and right now there's a kid who's got an idea who's 18 19 and unlike other people he's going to take that ideal and he's going to run with it and you know he's going to be 25 years old and he's going to be a millionaire and he's not going to go to school and people are going to actually piss on his success because they went to school because there's more people going to school than there are creating businesses there are more people going to school, traditional college, than who are creating lives of intent and design. So there's way more of those people. And anytime you have a huge segment of people who have shared experiences, they get a little cranky. It's like, I mean, it just, you don't believe me, go to the kids who just graduated college and look at the videos that they're putting on YouTube. There's video, I mean, it's not like a few dozen or a few, it's thousands of kids going, I was lied to. This is a scam. This is wrong. This is a worthless degree. Thousands and thousands of kids just go like, hey, just put these titles. I wish I never went to school. College is a scam. And you're not going to get one or two videos from someone my age. You're going to get some uh, videos from people who just went through the experience. So we're going to discount their experience. And I see it. It's like, well, they picked the wrong major. Uh, they did this. They did this. They did this. Essentially, they were sold a false set of goods. They were sold some rotten tomatoes in ripe containers. And when they bit down and they were like, what is this fucking worm in here? Then we want to say, hey, they made some decisions. No, society was set up for them to fail. And it continues to push and continues to push. Um, there are many colleges that are progressive, that are changing their curriculum, they're changing their pricing structure, they're changing how they teach people because it is a problem. And I will say it again, you go to school and you come out with $150,000, $200,000 worth of student loan debt and you can't get a decent job to service that debt, you're fucked. And you are fucked for decades. And it's happening. And I want you to think, once again, critical thinking, they changed the laws a few years ago. You can't bankrupt out of student loans. You can never get rid of student loans. The government has extremely huge powers to come after you for student loan debt like no one else. The only people that have more power is the IRS. They're running neck and neck. They may have the same level of powers, what they can do to you to get money out of you, but except there's one fundamental difference. The student loan collection agencies can go after your parents if they co-sign on your student loan debt and take their social security. So actually... Uh, the student loan collection agencies actually have more power than the IRS because the IRS can't do that. Don't believe me. Look it up. I want you to think, why were these laws enacted to go after someone's parents for student loan debt? This is the new slavery. First, hey, everyone needs to go to college. No child left behind act. But the people at the top who dictate they policy, they know what's going on. They have not one or two. They have some guy or girl that comes in their office every morning and is like, okay, Hal, this is what's going on in the world. They have this information. Fantastic. They know what's going on. They know when they create this policy that it's going to have X amount of jacked up effect. But you have the power to get out of that by charting your own destiny and educating yourself, which takes a lot of effort, which takes a requirement of knowing that you are fundamentally stupid. I'm fundamentally stupid on many things. There's so many things I don't know about. And it's like, damn. And I put myself in situations where I have to learn, which is humbling because, you know, you're in there and you want to think because you're a certain age that you should know this. Well, that's bullshit. Just because you're a certain age doesn't mean you're going to know stuff. There are people my age who can't fucking read. And they have been shamming it and hiding it and getting around that shit for decades. Can't read. And then there are people my age whose reading comprehension skills are dismal. They read it, but they don't understand that shit. They can pronounce the words, uh, dog, cat. What is a dog? I mean, seriously, you got people 
We can't comprehend shit. Is they they don't they are just a few levels above putting the X on the line for their signature. There are people like that. There's a lot of people like that, and we want to act like well they don't exist, but they do. And this is probably the biggest reason that I am doing this to craft a life of design intent. You will have to be stronger than social sanction and social acceptance. You will have to be because I know someone and we had this conversation. Her family, she went to school. She just signed up for um, $80,000 for student loan debt to go to grad school. And I'm just like, I hope it works out for you. And she's just like, well, they're on me. And, you know, I was like, now this person has a business on the side that was making $2,000 a month. Because going to school can't run that business. I have a feeling this is going to go powerfully bad. <laughs> I just do. I hope it doesn't because I'm looking at it. And it's, it's like you are from on the hill and you see the train about to hit the car and you're yelling, yo, don't get on the tracks. No, push. Because she's not going to school because she wants to. She's going to because her folks wanted to do it. So they can say, my girl's in school. That's what it's about. And I don't know how this is going to turn out. I'm just sitting there like, you got to be kidding me. But, you know, as you um, start your day, as you um, begin to think about your life, understand this part is true. People with more education do make more money. It is true. But going back to what I said, what is education? Education is learning everything. So if you educate yourself above and beyond college, you have a degree. And how many times have you heard someone with a degree with their own business or something that's like, I have not used any of the shit that I learned in college for this. How many times have you heard that? Which means they had to educate themselves beyond college to do what they're doing. You've heard that. Every one of you have heard someone say that. Everyone, you might be the person saying that. Which is empirical proof you don't need a degree to be successful in life. If you want to get one, or hey, you go into school and you come out of school with no debt, awesome. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. But for most people, the only way that they can get in those hallowed halls of education is selling their future. And to me, there's something wrong with that. All right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.